You find a long-lost cousin at your charity event. Yeah, it's kind of creepy, uh, but I like it. We uh, went over there a couple years ago. Kind of creepy, yet amazing at the same time. Kelly Rizzo, who you see right there from her show, Eat Travel Rock, discovering Anthony Rizzo from the World Series Chicago Cubs. Cousins, fourth cousins? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm getting choked up just watching the video of the Cubs. It's like, I'm still not over it. I don't think anyone in Chicago is going to get over that for a long time. It's like the city pride is just overflowing right now. Well, we'll throw it your way. Uh, pride of Chicago, that, that, that's, that's where you live, that's where you've grown mm -hmm. up, and that's where you've built this beautiful machine that is oh, e thank you. Eat Travel Rock. And the thing that's amazing about it is when you look at passions, I mean, everyone wants to eat, travel, meet the rock stars. You did it, but how did you create a, a, a viable vehicle? that you could travel around the world and make this content? You know what? It started out about three, four years ago. I, I was a realtor for years, for over a decade. And then when the market tanked, I'm like, you know what? I want to do something else. I was burnt out on it. I want to create a whole new career. And I just wanted to talk about what I was passionate about. And it was food, travel, and music, things that I knew a lot about and I really could speak to. And I liked being on camera. And I'm like, how do I just create a show? And so I teamed up with my manager and producer, who was with produced for Oprah for years and no big deal no big deal no big deal at all <laughs> Oprah's and, people involved you know, okay. right exactly and so we're like let's create this passion project and we were just kind of doing it for fun and then it turned into an actual full-time gig where yeah now I'm traveling around and eating a lot of food more than I'd like to admit sometimes well but work hard I'm not play gonna hard. complain. you <laughs> exactly. look amazing thank you you're holding it all together no doubt but uh, you've brought plenty of clips for us so let's start in the in the yeah. food the chef realm what have you found what have you loved in terms of hidden gems god you know what it's a lot, a lot of my food-focused shows are based in Chicago, and so I really just love to sit down with a chef and find out what their inspiration was and how they came up with, you know, whether it's the restaurant concept or the unique food items that they're that they're serving. So I just really love to get the chef's backstory, and so it's not as much about the actual food; it's more like how the concept came about. So that's a lot of the food-focused stuff. Okay, so food aside, uh, Dee Snyder is one of the many characters you've met along the way. Right? Tell us about he's this. Just so, he's so fun. And he was just, he was such a blast. And I loved interviewing him because he's just like the consummate rock star. And, but the funny thing is, is even when I'm interviewing a musician or an artist of sorts, I still like to tie in like whether it's the food or the travel with it. So I was talking to him about food a lot. What and he's you, a foodie. What do you find is the most common uh, bond in terms of question, the most common attribute that you ask that really gets people to open up? Because you've traveled around the globe mm -hmm. and met all types of people. I've actually found out that food really is the common bond because a lot of people, especially in their careers, they don't get to talk about it as much. Like if they're a musician, it's like everyone's always like, oh, tell, how'd you write your last album? And like, but it's funny when I throw in the food questions, like, well, where'd you travel and what, what did you eat there? What's your favorite restaurant in the city? And then they're like, oh my God, I want to talk about that. Yeah. And so that usually has been a common denominator um, where people really kind of love to talk about that. Now, is Fermento's one of the clips that you brought for us too? Yeah. Yeah, so Fermento's is a great Italian restaurant in Chicago, and you know because I am Italian or Sicilian, gotta gotta differentiate. Um, I love exploring Italian food. It's also mainly what I cook at home. And the chef there, he was a French chef, and he so him diving into the Italian realm was very very new. And I just loved kind of figuring out how he came up with the dishes he created because it's a very like modern, fresh Italian place and very different from your typical like hole-in-the-wall, mom-and-pop type of place. Well, I, I love the uh, the plating because I've only been to Chicago once and all I remember was the deep dish pizza, which was incredible. And I'm a fan, and there are there are two schools of thought on that. People, they either hate it or they love it, and of course I love it. Yeah, bring it on. Now, with the momentum you built with the show, you've also had the chance to travel Switzerland. Tell us about what you found yeah. for anybody that wants to go to Switzerland. Oh my gosh, Switzerland. So I was there in the summer, and we went to Badragatz, Zurich, and Stad. And Stad, which you'll see some of these clips, I mean, it's it was the most beautiful countryside I've ever Making seen. friends, I see. I know I milked goats, and they were just so friendly. And, I mean, because obviously Swiss, you know, they're known for the cheese and the chocolate. And so got to really get in there and help with the process. And it was just such a beautiful country. And the food was incredible. The hospitality is over the top. And I'm actually going back next month to film in a totally different situation because it will be the winter wonderland that obviously we expect in December in Switzerland. So I'll be actually snowboarding in 
in Zermatt and traveling to Zurich again. So it's going to be. You're living the dream right now. I'm trying. You know, it's fun. It's it's a, it's a hustle, but it's worth it. Well, in your dream, you also get cameos on your online show, including this one. Who, I ironically do. enough, uh, we have at 8:40, Bob Saget. What are the odds? How does this work? How you do you get what? Bob Saget on your online you show? You know what? It's so funny because um, we wanted to do this version where, when it comes out, it's a little teaser because we're releasing it actually next week. But he actually pretended he was me. He was walking down the street like like doing my typical intro, and then usually I busted him right there. I'm like, what are you doing? This is my show. And then we ate at one of his favorite restaurants in Chicago, which is Gibson's. And most people don't know he's also a musician and incorporates a lot of music into his act. So that's mainly what we talked about. The whole interview was music. Oh, I see some touching on the arm too. It looks oh like a yeah, with yeah, Ian yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. he's a wonderful guy. Yeah. So what are the odds he's here too? Hmm. How does that work? How does that work? Out of all the guests you've had on your show, is Bob one of the faves? I mean, he's he's up there. Yeah. He's up there. I mean, I don't know if I'd say he's the favorite, but he's up there for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So is there uh, some magic going on with you and Bob? Oh, you know, we'll, we'll see, right? We'll see what he has to say about it. <laughs> and Bob Saget is coming on at 840. Yeah. Hint, hint. Well, uh, you can check it out on YouTube, Eat Travel Rock. This is a great example of taking your passion and really creating content. Thank you so much, yeah. And traveling the world, so good on you. It's fun. Good follow on Instagram, too, for ideas where you can travel. So, Kelly, thanks so much. Thanks so much. Great meeting you. I appreciate it. We're going to get to the bottom of this with, uh, with Bob coming oh, up at 840. Good luck. <laughs> we'll find out.